first. Now, we have a, a video presentation. Um, has anybody been seeing what the weirdness of the fires out in Hawaii? Yeah. Strangeness in terms of how fires operate normally and then how they happen there or things that were happening in California a while back. We've got a presentation, if you guys are ready, uh, by Robert Brame. If the houses burn but the trees do not, is it really a forest fire? Stay in your seats, watch this, and we'll be right back afterwards. Welcome, everybody. My name is Robert. I'm a forensic arborist, and I've studied uh, the plant kingdom for 48 years, generally in central California, from sea level to 14,000 feet. I've studied the trees, ferns, shrubs, vines, and all the wildflowers. This is something I've done for a long time. I've also summited over 130 mountains, and I cook on the campfire for all these years. That's it's more fun to have a fire around. So I've burned pretty much all the different types of trees throughout the state. And what I saw about seven years ago on the internet was a picture of Santa Rosa. I was designing a hike up there. And uh, I saw this picture from the air that didn't make any sense to me. I have a background in knowing all the trees in the entire state of California and seeing plenty of fire aftermaths. And I'd never seen anything like this where the houses are missing and turned to white ash, yet the trees are still there. The last seven years, this is all I've been studying. And uh, I'm going to share all these photographs so everybody can get up to speed on what I see and discover what's going on with our forest and why they're burning all our homes down but leaving the trees. So let's get started. I'm going to start with pictures of the forest. This is Santa Rosa, California, where 4,700 homes are just missing. They're not even turned black. The houses are white ash, but yet the trees are still standing, and most of them are green. To me, that's impossible. This is what I'm finding all throughout California. The houses are missing every time. I never see a partially burned house, no half houses. They're either completely gone or they're untouched. Yet, I find trees everywhere, all species. In the last seven years, I've analyzed 38 fire aftermaths and taken 107 trips to all of them. Out of all those 107 trips, I believe only three that I analyzed out of the 38 were actual forest fires where the trees burned up. The rest of them were something else. This is the giant fire we had in Paradise, California, where 15,000 homes approximately were taken away. But yet, as you can see, the forest remains. The trees are probably dead, but they are not burned up. Very few are burned up. And yet, houses are just missing. I've probably put 10,000 miles on my feet backpacking through the whole Sierra Nevada at all elevations. I know every tree in the state. I know which trees burn, and I've seen plenty of fires, the aftermath, where the forest is just gone, leaving poles, half stumps, limbless sticks 100 feet high, nothing ever remotely close to this. This, is, to me, was impossible. So it piqued my curiosity, and I started looking into it more. This is from a drone looking down at Paradise. These are... 60 to 80 foot ponderosa pines, the number one pine tree in California that burns more often than any other species and by far. Our whole Sierra Nevada has ponderosa pine in it, plus many areas in the coast range, the southern areas by LA and up north towards Oregon. These trees are not burning up. I'm noticing Many of these fires are burning a lot of homes and businesses down in the lowlands. This is uh, Santa Rosa also, the same fire. The McDonald's at the top, the gas station to the right, and Jack in the Box to the left. These are all newer construction buildings. They don't have a lot of wood showing. They're mostly plastics, metals, slate, granite, metals, all kinds of other materials. Yet all three are just missing and leaving piles of metals, yet the trees around them all 
are light green. Some are a little bit brown, but they're not burned up. What kind of forest fire forgets to burn the forest? Oddly, all three of the trees in this area are in the poison oak family. Chinese pistachio, Peruvian pepper, or California pepper, and African sumac. Uh, none of them burned up. And yet, there's your house, your building's gone. At the top of the screen is Highway 101, six-lane freeway. The fire came across the freeway and just attacked the buildings. That's kind of a weird anomaly. This is the Fawn Fire about three years ago, I believe, in Redding, California, where they put a lady in jail and are framing her and saying she's the one who started this fire. Incidentally, around the state, there's five or six people that they've labeled arsonists and put them in jail for doing these, uh, the, starting these fires. None of them have started these fires. They don't have the aptitude to even begin to start these fires in their wildest dreams. I talked to a gentleman here at this house. I couldn't let him know what happened. This is a two-story house that's just gone. And in the background, you have a digger pine on the left. The next tree, is, the skinny one, is a deodar cedar from the Himalayan. That's in the pine family. A black oak, another digger pine, and a ponderosa pine. All of these are dead, but they're not burned up. And if you look in the background, brown trees everywhere holding their needles. This is last year in July, August, near Yosemite. The western side of Yosemite is a town called Mariposa. There was a fire there called the Oak Fire. And I saw foul play on the computer screen when I saw the pictures. So I went up there and spent the whole day. Again, the Ponderosa Pines are the tall ones. There's a few white firs in there. And the oak trees are uh, valley oak, black oak. And maybe there's an incense cedar in here. The only trees that burned were in close proximity to these mobile homes or homes. The homes are just gone, leaving metals. And the forest is dead, but I can't say it's burned up. And this is everywhere I go. Another picture of the same. Unless the tree's really close to the homes, they're not burned up. This is our biggest fire we've had in years. I bet uh, three years ago, by the Mount Lassen, the volcano in the Cascade Range, there's a town called Greenville. This fire was approximately a million acre fire by itself. And if you look in the background, None of the trees are burned up. Those are ponderosa pine, white fir, and perhaps red fir and incense cedar. The town itself is missing. All they left is one gas station and one food store. Get your groceries from. The rest of it looks just like this. I walked every street in that town, and it all looks the same. Over on the 395 corridor, that's the freeway that goes down the eastern side of the Sierra Nevada between Lake Tahoe in the Los Angeles area. This is a town called Walker on the Walker River system. It's kind of a real flat area where it can flood sometimes from the river and they put mobile homes and small houses out here. A fire came through and burned this garage to the ground, leaving all the metals. The man was a metal worker. He had a metal shop with all kinds of uh, drill presses and lays and such like that. It must've got extremely hot heating this thing up, but yet to your left, is a pinion pine. That's the pine nut of commerce that we eat, the number one pine nut used on the planet. There it is, pine family, hanging over the building, but it did not burn up. Those should burn up pretty darn quick. This is back to Greenville by Mount Lassen. The town's missing, the trees are dead, but I can't say they're burned up. Along Highway 89, which connects Mount Lassen and Shasta with Lake Tahoe, it's a high Sierra back road. Here's where the Dixie fire came through. It didn't burn any trees, although the trunks are black. The main growth layer of all your trees is your cambium layer, and that's where all the cambial fluids are. They're just inside the bark, the outer bark, and that's where your moisture moves the quickest to the top of the tree to feed the needles and or leaves and keep it healthy. So it moves fairly quick, and that seems to be what's igniting the trunks turn black because of the liquids, which doesn't make much sense. I will get into that a little bit later, but that's all I find burned is the trunks. No needles are burned. 
I would say that's impossible, but there's your picture. Even with needles hanging very, very low to the ground. Same here, that's the oak fire out of Mariposa. Young ponderosa pines, needles almost on the ground. They didn't ignite. Uh, the needles have fallen off, but that's you know a month or two later. Big Basin State Park is a park south of San Francisco, which is created because of the redwood trees that were uh, reside in that park. About two years ago, they burned the whole park up and shut it down for two years. I'm standing by the ocean. The ocean's behind me. I'm on Highway 1, our coastal highway in California. This is a grove of blue gum eucalyptus, arguably the most combustible leaf I know of. I can light these on fire when they're green with a cigarette lighter in my hand. And I better be running pretty quick. That's how fast these things will go. As you can see, not one leaf burned. The fire went under them, burned the trunks again, but left the leaves alone. That was one of my most damning photos I've ever taken. This is your same grove two or three months later when we got some rainfall and the grass is growing, but you'll notice many of these trees did not regenerate. Now a eucalyptus tree, especially this species, I can cut it down and it grows back. Every year I could cut it down, it grows back. There's one in the middle over there, a little ways over that has some green leaves on it, but the rest, they're pretty dead. That's another anomaly that I've never seen. This is uh, your Douglas fir tree, tallest of the pine family up in Calistoga, the, the wine country. And here's a very flammable Douglas fir in, you know, needles touching the ground. It would not ignite. This is also the Redding fire, uh, the fawn fire, they called it. And there was a grove of eucalyptus here. Same anomaly. Leaves refused to burn. Another very flammable leaf happens to be in the laurel family, along with camphor trees and avocado trees. This is a California bay tree. I can light this on fire with a cigarette lighter, and when I'm camping, backpacking in the lower areas of California, and my fire is getting low and it's time to go to sleep, I will cut off some leaves, put them in my little fire, and instantly they will ignite and I'll see the whole area. A very combustible leaf. Takes a little bit of heat, once it goes, it's amazing how fast and how much light you will get. To this day, I've not seen one leaf of a bay or a eucalyptus burn in all of my trips to these 38 aftermaths. Not one leaf. And that got me analyzing trees that hold the most water. And most of those happen to be hard, hardwoods, like this walnut. This is an English walnut in an orchard. The ground out there has almost zero combustibility. The grass in the background is just an inch high. They run cattle out here. Cattle eat the grass down to the nubs. The hay truck has to come out, throw hay off to feed the cattle. So how could this tree burn at the bottom all the way through and from the inside out? That's nearly impossible. Nobody stacked firewood against it. This thing is hollow. And when I cut a walnut tree down, plenty of water comes out. This isn't the oldest tree in the forest that happens to have a lot of heartwood or rot or a hollow cavity. These are young, vigorous trees. And incidentally, the leaves didn't burn again. So I'm seeing trees all over burn from the inside out. This was a uh, California bay tree. The tree they took away because it was hanging over the road and it was dead up top. And this is what I found hollow burn from the inside out as well as this one 10 or 20 feet away there was no hole to get a fire inside of these things but yet there they are burning internally this is a blue oak blue oaks have their own forest at lower elevations just above your san joaquin plain where it's all grasslands the next comes the blue oaks they're very hardy very strong a smaller oak tree and here they are, burning from the inside out again, with hardly anything on the ground. Rocks, some dirt. There's no way that fire could get in there. And all the leaves, again, are not burned. Another blue gum eucalyptus. This one was perhaps 130 feet tall. This giant thing fell over. It's seven feet tall if I stand next to that giant cavity. And oddly, the biggest burned area was at the base, where you see the metal... T-post hammered in the ground, holding this fence. 
there was actually one of those posts behind the stump touching it. I'm starting to think, okay, the steel post got super hot and did this kind of damage. I've never seen to this day any cavities in a eucalyptus tree in uh, 33 years of doing tree work. Zero cavities. They compartmentalize their wounds very well, seal it off, and there's no cavity. But yet, here's this gigantic hole. And around it, there was not enough combustible material to warrant this kind of burn. This is a madrone tree, also over there in the Oak Fire by Mariposa. A madrone tree is in the blueberry and cranberry family. This thing holds a ton of water. It's a north-facing slope water lever that holds so much water you can't believe it. And there's a creek below it. Also, your manzanita happened to be in this family. And although it's very drought tolerant, if you cut a manzanita open, tons of water pours out. So here's your madrone burned from the inside out. In the background, you see leaves and plants, dead but not burned. So I'm finding the water-loving or highest water-holding capacity trees are the first to burn and from the inside out. Uh, this is a cypress tree in the north area, Santa Rosa, I believe. Not my picture. Nothing's on fire anywhere except the inside of this cypress tree. Same with this one. These were not lightning strikes. They're, they're a little bit different. A lightning strike will put a stripe from the top of the tree to the ground and splay it open, leave a stripe. It doesn't go inside the tree and burn it from the inside out. I've seen thousands of lightning strikes all over the high Sierra. They don't look like this. This one has greenery everywhere. Where'd the fire come from? I have a lot to say about this tree. This is back in the town of Walker, California. This is probably the largest water holding capacity tree in the Western United States. It's a Fremont cottonwood. They can grow at least 80 feet tall, six to 10 feet in diameter. And there's a few of them that are 15 feet in diameter. This is related to your willows and your aspen at higher elevations. If you cut it down, water is gushing out of this thing everywhere. It has to grow in a creek area where there's a creek, a lake, a spring, or a river. There has to be a water source if they, or they start dying back immediately. So this is an, a riparian corridor. All the river rocks around here are rounded because they move every so many years. They move down the river, rolling their way around. There was nothing on the ground this fires could have burned, but yet the tree burned one whole side and into the heartwood, exposing the middle of the tree. And there's just no combustible materials to warrant this kind of burn. I see this all the time now. It's the first anomaly I look for. I go to the wildfires and I find a creek area and I start looking for madrone, maples, cottonwoods, willow trees, alders, anything that holds a lot of water and I see what kind of burn patterns they have. This is back to that walnut orchard where you even see little grasses around. They're not burned. The little grasses in the distance, they're not burned. What could burn through a walnut like this? What I'm finding out in the last couple of years of my seven-year journey exploring this, I'm finding out what I believe is the ground itself is on fire. The after effect are the trees burning from the inside out. Anything that holds a lot of water is what burns from the inside out. Your pines burn from the inside out, but at a much slower rate because they're sappy. And I think it's something to do with electrical currents and the water is a better conductor and the sap is a little bit slower. Uh, this is in the California Delta on the confluence of the Sacramento and McCollumney River. It's a mobile home park. I believe 19 or 21 mobile home park campers or mobile homes were taken away. They were just gone. All that was left was the frames. And this happens to be a mulberry tree. <laughs> mulberry trees are related to fig trees. They have white juice in them. It's an easy way to tell the family of plants they're in. Uh, you cut them open, there's white sticky juice everywhere, like a fig tree. They both hold a ton of water in this white form. And they're very hardy as long as they get their water. This was a very healthy one, I knew. It looked like lightning hit it for an hour. I've never seen anything like this in my life. From the inside out again, it was burned. The bark flew off. Even the grass nearby refused to burn. An anomaly that's just hard to understand. 
This is a log pile on the outskirts of Big Basin State Park. These are the two tallest trees on the planet, coastal redwood from the coast range of California and Douglas fir, second tallest in the world and tallest in the entire pine family. If you look close, you'll see the middle of these trees is dead. We call that the heartwood. Some of them have cracks in it. That's non-conductive tissue, dead. Around the perimeter, closest to the edge, is the sapwood. That's the live tissue where your vascular membranes are that transport liquids up and down the tree. If you'll notice, the hardwood is 60 to 80% dead. Now, you should not see that in these trees. Uh, these are baby trees when it comes to the, these two species. The redwood can be 15 feet across in diameter, and the Douglas fir can be eight foot in diameter. This hardwood is showing it like it's a very, very old tree. And these are babies when it comes to these two. So I figured out these things have been cooked from the inside out. I don't know if it's happening quick or if it takes hours, but they're cooking from the inside out because of the vascular fluids inside. Another pile of uh, Douglas fir and uh, perhaps a few redwoods in there. Same thing. Some of this heartwood is 90%. That would be impossible unless they were in the wrong ecosystem. Here they get plenty of fog, moisture, all that. You'll notice in the background all the leaves are dead, but nothing's burned up. So these trees are cooking from the inside out. Now I'm going to move on to materials. This is an anomaly now at these fires. Um, perhaps one out of two or 300 tires look like this. They're not melted. They're not disfigured. Huh. Then I see this on the label. A polyester cord, perhaps it has one wire going around the bead of the tire to hold it onto the rim. Other than that, it's almost completely steel belted cordless. And then I find this. This is 90% of the time. This is the way our tires look. Steel belts are left. The rubber is completely gone. I never find the rubber. It's turned to carbon, I guess. Even when they're sitting by themselves, on the street or out in the dirt. This one, no black, nothing. It's another anomaly. Almost every aftermath I go to has fence posts that only burn at the ground because I really believe the ground itself is on fire. And any of the metal hardwares, the nails, screws, bolts, hinges, or other metal fasteners of some kind. That's where most of your burning is happening. The wood is burning as a secondary thing and only because of close proximity to the males. This is your oak fire right east of Mariposa City, which is on the west side of Yosemite National Park in California. This was the top piece to a fence. The only place it burned was where they had little nails in every burn spot. And if you look close, you will see a nail at every burn spot. I moved it around a little bit. So some of the nails fell out, but you can see at least three of them here. Now, what kind of fire burns like this? Not butane, propane, acetylene, wood fires. No, it's something else. And I've figured it out that these are actually microwave fires. That's the best conclusion I can draw. And I've had a fire in my microwave, a bit of uh, tin foil on the top that I didn't notice from when you buy the thing. And I heard some sparks and stuff, and I turn around, and there's a flame in my microwave. Now, I don't expect anybody to even try this, but that's closer to what's really going on here than a wood fire. Um, that's not happening. These are some type of microwave-based flames because only the metals are on fire. And I have plenty of photos like this where the nails themselves are on fire, and the fire even goes out between the nails. <laughs> A fire doesn't play games. It burns the whole post, drops the nails on the ground if it keeps going. So the nails themselves are on fire, and I'm finding this at every single aftermath. Some of the same fires or different ones. I can always find these. I picked up that 4x4 four four just to show the nails because it was laying on the ground there. Then the fire went out. Didn't, doesn't really care for the wood. And in the background, ponderosa pine. Not really burned up. This is a fence post near Topaz Lake, California. 
where they gamble. It's right near the Nevada border. Uh, I noticed there was a fire here, oh, maybe five, six years ago or more. And I saw this post and I had to walk up and analyze it. It only burned where the barbed wire was. And then the barbed wire moved around from probably the wind swaying the post. But it should have burned the whole post. More of the same. Some leg screws here and the barbed wire. A split rail fence made of one of our two native cedars, either red cedar from the coast or incense cedar from the high Sierra. Those are our two native false cedars. This is four or five feet in the air. It didn't want to burn <laughs> except where the nails are. Same thing on all of these. The most burned area is where the hardware is. So you're finding these wherever you go at every aftermath. The metal T-post on the back, that's where most of your fire was. It didn't want to go around the corner. Fire doesn't play favorites. It laps right and left. It goes everywhere. It doesn't burn straight lines like that. This is a parking block. It's perhaps 30 feet long, homemade. It only burned where the bolts connected to the post that goes down and buried in the ground. Each one of these is different. It's the same board. Nowhere else was it burned, just the bolts. How about that? They backfilled it with some rocks for decorative purposes. I never heard of a fire that attacks bolts, but that's what happens when you have this type of flame. It doesn't care about organics. It likes the metal, other uh, ferrous or non-ferrous materials. Same thing here. This is about five feet in the air up at the Fawn Fire out of Redding also. I don't know if I've said it, but five or six people in California are in jail and they're framing them saying they started these fires. None of them could have started those fires. And I've analyzed every one that they supposedly started. No, this is something much deeper than a simple common wood fire that we know of. This is on Sonora Pass Road, the second highest pass in California going over the Sierra Nevada. A fire went up there and burned down a community called Dardanelle. Anomalies everywhere. And this was a granite area where the river's right below. There's nothing here to burn. It's granite rock. But here, the old bridge that we don't use anymore, which was all metal and wood, it burned up and they took it all away. They took every piece they could find, but they forgot this piece. There it is again, the bolts. And where did it burn? Where the bolts were, nowhere else. This is a wagon wheel, something decorative in somebody's front yard. You'll notice the burning. It just happened to land right where the bolts 